Hey, all this is part four. We're going to be getting the length of an array. Very, very, very similar to getting the length of a string. There's a dot length property. You apply it to the array that you want the length of. You can actually apply it directly in cases like this. So we'll have a quick glance. Nice. We can also apply it to an array that's been saved into a variable as such. So Alan Turing, Ada Lovelace, Al Khwarizmi, and Ezra Edsger Dijkstra. Excellent. Each one of these people has a pretty cool story behind them. Uh, this is where we get the algorithm word from. This is a very, very popular computer scientist. I don't know enough about this guy to, to really like give like a quick tidbit. Uh, but Alan Turing, that's one of those sad stories. But it starts out really nice, so you might want to check it out. But in any case, we can save the um, array into a variable and then apply the dot .length uh, property to that uh, variable and go from there. So getting the length of an array, we're going to complete a function that takes in one parameter, an array, and returns the length of that array. Your function should create a variable and assign it to the length of the input array using the dot .length property and return that variable. Below are examples of the code running, assuming that you will have completed the described function, get array length. Grab our stub, paste it in, grab the test cases, paste those in, create a length variable, and assign it to the length of the array. And let's just make sure that we're aware that we can call this whatever we want. So length of input array. See, we've said create a length variable, and we've said create a result variable. But you want to keep in mind that for the most part, variables in JavaScript are kind of dealer's choice. And the same thing applies to the input here. So one thing that we're going to do uh, in this problem, and just throwing this tidbit in there for beginners who are watching all these videos, let's go ahead and change this to string, uh, string object, why not? And the only thing that we're going to demonstrate here is that it does not matter what we call our parameter. It matters where our parameter is compared to the argument we supply for that parameter and the definition of the function's use of that parameter. So if we were to leave this as array.length, we're going to run into a problem. But if we leave it as string object everywhere, uh, we will have no problem. Oh, and that just reminds me, I forgot the idiom that I was going to use for to replace in good shape this time. Mm, maybe we'll think of it by the end. But anyway, let's go ahead and run this. So we should get five and four, we do. Let's paste this on in. And run our test. Ah, I remember, and we have won the day. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.